is actually one about uh, the Queenstown Eastern Cape issue, mm -hmm. uh, where it's that time of the year and young people in the Eastern Cape are about to embark on an important rite of passage into manhood. And uh, they go into initiation schools, not only to be circumcised, but also to be taught values, discipline and principles that will help them become better men. Now, according to a report, uh, you're saying goes. In the past year alone, an estimated 22 youths have died around the province, while 17 died during the recent uh, winter initiation season. And often these deaths occur at illegal initiation schools and at the hands of unregistered traditional surgeons. So uh, the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders believes that the introduction of specialized courts may be part of the solution of fighting the deaths of initiates in the province. To speak to us about this on this matter, we're joined by the CEO of the Eastern Cape Traditional Leaders Council, Mzue Temba Nkanzu. Uh, Mzue Temba, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Oh, th thanks, madam. I, I appreciate that you have invited me. We appreciate your time. So over the years, I mean, every year we hear, unfortunately, uh, numbers, certain numbers of young people using their lives uh, during the initiation season. And for over the years, it's been attributed to people who are operating uh, not so much illegally, but they're not uh, registered uh, or um, sanctioned uh, surgeons that are meant to be doing the work. So from the traditional leader's side, what are you hoping um, these courts will do? How will they function? Uh, thanks, uh, Madam, and, to, and the viewers out there. Uh, you will recall that the Eastern Cape House of Traditional Leaders has been spearheading monitoring and interventions uh, on the initiation program that is taking place in the province to ensure that all challenges that are facing the custom are mitigated. And uh, we, we have over years detected what uh, could be the, the main contributory factors. And one of those uh, revolves around illegal uh, traditional surgeons and also uh, traditional nurses who are inexperienced. And then now what then happened is that in 2017, uh, the Eastern Cape government has actually passed a law, uh, the customary initiation practice, which uh, obviously seeks to tighten uh, all the corners to ensure that there are arrests that are being made, to ensure that there are no gaps. But then what then happened is that now, uh, in the recent past, we have managed to arrest, you know, some of those. And uh, the initiation fora which operates in our districts, they are managing. We monitor and also we train the traditional surgeons, so at least we've got a database of traditional surgeons that can be accessed by those who want to utilize them. Then now, uh, coming to the Joint Operations Center, we, we sat down and said, what is it that we can do better uh, as we are approaching this summer season? And uh, the Provincial Initiation Coordinating Committee, which is chaired by the chairperson of the House, Ngosumwere Nongonyana, and the members of the cabinet in the Eastern Cape, resolved that there has got to be a joint operation center. That joint operation center is going to be uh, effective from tomorrow, which is the 19th, uh, because we expect a number of boys to go to initiation school uh, in this coming weekend. Mm. Uh, what this is going to be doing, this talk, uh, it's going to ensure a rapid response mechanisms. Uh, communities in the Eastern Cape, they will be able to to, to, to report any illegal acts which relate to the initiation custom uh, to the number which is 10 one because we are working with the provincial commission in the Eastern Cape who is the member of the PICC. Uh, then uh, all officials um, under that 10 one will, will know where to channel information which relates to, to, to initiation custom. And then now there's going to be a rapid, rapid response mechanism. Uh, it's not only intended to arrest people, but, but it's, going to, it's also intended to ensure that uh, boys are rescued immediately. You know, because what, 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 what has been a challenge is that uh, these boys will be seen maybe after four or five days, you know, in a, in a hidden place, 
and the members, some of some members of the community will be aware of those, but they will not inform authorities. Then this mechanism now seeks to ensure that there's rapid response mechanism to ensure that the lives of these boys are saved, you know, in this coming season. Uh, remember that throughout all our districts, we have now established district initiation fora. Then beneath those district initiation fora, you are having local initiation fora, which are linked to local municipalities. Then beneath that, that, that level, you are having uh, initiation committees, which are hands-on at the level of communities, working, you know, with special councils at, at that level. Then basically, we are going to, you, we are going to be now to having that kind of protocol uh, that seeks to ensure that we respond rapidly, you know, to all matters that are detected by turning the initiation custom. Mzotemba, without giving away too much, because it obviously is a traditional custom, when a boy comes of age and decides or, and is going to initiation school, who makes the decision uh, about which school he's going to go to? Is that his decision or a family decision? Parents are critical. Remember, this is a custom which is anchored uh, to families. Government is only intervening here. Uh, if a boy is going, must, must undergo uh, uh, initiation, Parents must have a meeting uh, with a boy. Then within the community, they must identify a legal traditional surgeon. And if that person is not aware, you know, of any traditional surgeon in that area, we always inform them that they can go to, to traditional leaders in their areas or watch committees. Then they will be advised appropriately about the traditional surgeon that they must use and the, the, the traditional nurse that they must use. It's determined by the family. You know, and then now what then happens is that now, uh, as government, we are empowering these traditional surgeons and traditional nurses so that at least they are able, you know, to, to deliver appropriately and minimize all these challenges. Uh, then basically that's it. It's a, it's a family that must decide. Government can impose and say a particular family must utilize that, that. And I think this is where the challenge is, because now the main challenge here is that you are getting a number of boys who will not even talk to their parents, uh, who will simply uh, disappear. After five days, six days, this boy has been taken somewhere. They, I mean, illegal sessions. Then they will be paying uh, for the operation uh, by the cell phone, you know, or maybe by a trouser. You know, because this is what is happening. Then they, they, they you know, there's criminality that is actually uh, 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 arisen, you know, in this process. This is basically now what we want to manage, you know, uh, from a legal perspective to ensure that we pin down, you know, on those guys. What are the consequences of operating as an illegal surgeon? I know you were speaking about trying to make information of the legal surgeons available to the public. Those who have been found to be operating illegally, what are the consequences? Those who are currently operating illegally, how do they then fall in line and become legitimate and legal and able to operate? We are having uh, initiation for uh, at the local level. If there's, there's any special surgeon who wants to come up front and say he wants to be legalized in terms of following up all the documentation, that person must approach a local chief then the local chief will refer that person to the designated medical officer of the Department of Health in terms of the legislation. Then that person will be screened. Uh, but remember that we, we you know, the, the issue of, the, of becoming a traditional surgeon is not something that, you, that, that, that is academic where you can be taken to the facility. It's a gift you know, that you must inherit, you know, somewhere, and you must be known by the community. And the legislation requires that you must then, you know, once those qualities are detected from you, you must then be mentored for a period of five years by a qualified trial surgeon. Basically, that is the process. We, 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 we have got adverts in radio stations everywhere, even in communal stations, to say they must all come up front because we want to forge a relationship so that this is, at least we ensure that there's a limited number of these guys out there. Recently, you know, three weeks ago, we had another uh, phase or round of training for transgender surgeons and transgender nurses because we want them to be fully empowered because we understand the problem, you know, is in, in, the, in that area. Thank you.
Thank you very much for joining us on the line again this morning. That was the CEO of the Eastern Cape Traditional Leaders Council, Mzwe Temba Mganso, speaking to us about the creation of specialized courts uh, in the help uh, of trying to alleviate debts uh, in, in the initiatives.